All right, here we have a Wyco X XH1042 is the exact model there. Sorry if you can't see that. I'll have to take a picture of that. So this is our Wyco X, uh, the main, it's mostly taken apart at the moment, um, but the lower half is assembled. Now I'm going to briefly talk about this, um, you can buy that DVD, and they got them all at all the tractor places, but uh, the DVD will tell you how to rebuild these, but from what I have found, they only to show you the Wyco C model. I know it's very similar, but you know I was a little uh, disappointed that I found that the movie only showed a C. But uh, anyways, uh, you take this nut off, and then this this cup assembly here has a spring inside of it, and uh, you kind of have to pry it up a little bit with uh, screwdrivers, and uh, it may spring off it may just disintegrate because some of them do and uh, you know you know you might have to rock it a little bit but there's a spring inside there and there are two washers that are semicircle and uh, the semicircle washers have a little notch cut out and the center of the spring is held tension against those washers and the shaft here is actually semicircle which allows those washers to attach to it with the tension of the spring and below that I apologize that I don't I'm not disassembling this but I just assembled it with a new spring so uh, below that the cup and the spring there is a I believe it's a large washer and that large washer goes over the top of the two dogs here and uh, they once again, sorry if you can't see that, but there's part of it. The two two arms that spring either way, and uh, they catch on on this here, which is your leg. Uh, you know, uh, it, it it creates the jump for the spark at the necessary time, and uh, the two the two spread and they catch on this every time you turn it or most times in a you know turning it by hand it, it's a different scenario when it's on a tractor running but when they catch that's your uh, your jump and uh, your two dogs are there below that there's a plate and everything that the dog is attached to and they got a little washers and things on there but the whole thing comes off off of the shaft and below that is a it's a, uh, a washer type deal and I think there's some fabric in there and uh, that that holds the lubrication that's supposed to spread oil uh, you know keep keep miscellaneous parts oiled and uh, such you know such as the dogs but uh, there's a I think there's another washer below that oh uh, back up a little bit uh, between the dogs, there's a uh, yeah. Between the dogs on that, its own separate disc below below this cup, um, there's a a bushing in the center which spaces it between the dogs and holds the spring assembly above it. So back down below the dogs, below the plate, there's the uh, oiler disc, and below that. I believe there is another bushing. Uh, I, yeah, I, I believe there's another bushing. And then uh, below that is the bearing. There, there is a bearing in there. And uh, this is what the bearing looks like. It's not very large. You know, you can see that my finger here. Uh, you know, if you go to the hardware store now if you probably know what the size of this is so it's the bearing and uh, here's actually the part number for it so you don't have to go all through that trouble to take it apart to get the part number so 
201-SS. And this is a national bearing sold by CarQuest. Okay, that bearing goes in there. And, uh, well, actually, yeah, back up a second. There is this, this, this piece here is another disc. Now that actually is held in place by these four pan head screws uh, with a flat bladed head, slotted head. Uh, that, there's little notches, actually it's right here. There's little notches, you can see that. And uh, you're supposed to set that to 20 degrees. Uh, I don't know what the increments of those notches are, but uh, I, I marked this before I took it apart. So, hopefully that's right. If not, then I'll have to do a little fine tuning, but those four screws come out, that, that plate comes out, then you can actually get to the, the bearing. And by then, after all this is disassembled on this side, that, that shaft actually pops out of the other side. Well, once that is removed, we'll get to that in a second. When that, that the shaft is out, the bearing is accessible. And uh, you will have to, yeah, we'll, we'll go up to the top here now. See which way I have this. That's the way it's positioned on the tractor, like so, vertical. But since it likes to sit better that way, we'll do it like that. Um, these, these four screws are difficult to get out. As you can see here, it's a non-reversible head. When I mean non-reversible, you use your screwdriver and you try turning it backwards counterclockwise and your blade does not seat. It's only allowed to turn clockwise, not counterclockwise. So, these are difficult to remove and thus the vice grips are sitting here and that's exactly how you're supposed to get it out. You could use another player pliers, but uh, I have found that the corrosion in these is large and that is basically the only way you can really get it out without hurting anything. You could possibly weld it, but that's your risk. Heat can distort, so you know, even doing it for a couple seconds, that's uh, enough that can actually hurt something. But there's four of those, and uh, John Deere gets a little over seven dollars a piece for them. This this exact style, I don't recommend putting it back in, but I guess you could. Anyways, if you buy these from the hardware store, very difficult to find. It's a 12 by, I believe it was 24. 24 thread. And it, it's a, it is a standard size 12, just above a 10. And uh, it was very tricky to find. There was one box in the entire hardware aisle and in that box there was one section that had only one size and one size only two inch which worked out because these are two inch so those were 45 cents a piece so there's one way to save money and have the ability to take it apart again without ruining anything those are slotted or they're Phillips so that's what those are. Okay, and uh, this main assembly here, after you have your points and your condenser and, you know, little holders here for the, the coil part, once all that's removed, that's what it'll look like. So you take those out and this thing comes off. Kind of get a jimmy it a little bit, but it should come out of there. It'll be all rusty and whatever, and you just clean it up real well, the best you can. You know, you can possibly sandblast it, but be careful. Take that out, and then uh, that the shaft should come out from the other side after we had all that disassembled. 
once the shaft is out then there's one last thing that this bearing sits inside it's a, it's a little bit it, it, I think it's actually pressed into that piece and that piece just sort of sits in there it didn't sit in there or it just sat in there on this one but the other one I actually had to press that piece in it's just a, a disc uh, I don't know aluminum disc that this this goes inside of and that gets pressed into the main housing here mine fell in but this gets pressed into that so uh, all I did since uh, I have a 5 inch Wilton bench vise many of them actually but I use one of them and uh, you can use I think it's a I use a 13 16 or a 7 8 socket on this you use the outside edge outside edge of the bearing with a large socket you should be able to press the two together uh, vice versa taking it out I use I think I use a three quarter inch short socket and uh, you can press it out and press it in with a vise so it's not too difficult just make sure it's going in center and that you're not crushing the middle part of the bearing I don't recommend pushing on the inside but try as best as you can to get a socket that fits the outside and uh, make sure it's not touching the aluminum on the inside of here because if you press too hard then you can crack it and it's junk you could weld it but then again uh, you may be interfering so alright well uh, I got various things here sitting around me on this box um, this is a, uh, a new rotor Let's see if I can get it out of there tight fitting box could they make the box any smaller jeez alright here's what the rotor looks like for these things it, uh, it's wider than a 90 degree angle I don't know what the exact angle size is of that but it's more than a 90 for sure and uh, when this goes on your shaft here it's supposed to be tight not supposed to wobble and it's definitely not supposed to be loose in any direction that it may possibly be depending on what the condition of your shaft is so if it's loose then well you know your shaft is probably ruined or you know worn or whatever but this one actually looks very good it's not corroded and uh, that should go right on there just perfect so Yeah, actually, actually there's some there's quite a bit of force to put that on so you get kind of just have to push it down but uh, that's supposed to go on there tight so and uh, here's the point that, that part number I don't know you got to go to these guys I apologize but uh, it's kind of hard